Bob Cooper from HelpMySquashGame.com and I hope you're having a fantastic time. I'm wearing red because it's just past Canada Day uh, and we've been celebrating uh, this great country that is now my home. And I've had so many questions come through to me just lately about doubles. I thought I would spend the majority of this show talking about doubles and uh, giving you some insights about how to play and, and how this great game goes. And this is North American hardball doubles. So this is played on a bigger court uh, with lines that step down rather than lines that are going straight down like this. And there's a few things that are different when you're playing with a partner. One of the first ones is you are playing with a partner. So that means from the warm up onwards, you're supposed to be supportive. That sounds so obvious, I know, but it's so subtle. You know, did you ever watch the movie Hitch? Um, and he says in there that 90% uh, of what people are picking up is not coming out of your mouth. And that's what happens with doubles. So when you warm up and go on the court with your partner, you want them to feel comfortable and you want them to feel competent. Remember what I said last show about being unconsciously competent? Well, in order to warm up with them, why not hit balls that they can hit back? This is not about you getting really good and making your partner feel like an idiot. This is actually about the two of you working as a team. So yes, you need to test your shots out, but the first thing both of you need to do when you warm up is get warm and get together. The other thing is when I uh, watch people play is I don't know anybody in this world who f blossoms through criticism. Actually, they're empowered through encouragement. So when you're on the court with somebody, I would encourage them, even if, the, even if something goes slightly wrong, go talk to them, give them a pat on the back, say well done, good shot, maybe, but communicate. And thirdly, the difference between singles and doubles is you really have to know who's on the hook. And what I mean by who's on the hook is when you're playing doubles, one person has just hit the ball. Now they are the one that is likely to be a little bit more under pressure. So if you've put your opponent under pressure, one of the team, then likely you should hit it back to that person again, but somewhere else on, on the court. So often what I see is I see singles players who are used to hitting the ball away from the person, they go and play the ball to the partner. And the partner's just been standing around watching. They're not under pressure at all. They're happy to actually get involved. So start to pay attention to who is on the hook, who really is under pressure, and then try and exploit that hole when you're playing doubles. And this is where communication between you and your partner can really help because if you're not aware of it, your partner can often help you by guiding you as to where to hit the ball or what to do, move up, move back, that sort of stuff. Communication is key. And in terms of this, I want to mention the doubles book that I wrote. It's called Double Up. Now this is an emotional training book for you and your partner. So this will teach you how to do drills, how to think, how to be on the court with your partner, how to make them feel like they are actually your partner, not your opponent. That sort of stuff is really cool because if you and your partner have a really solid connection and you're, you're gonna fight through anything, often you can be in the most awful situations and still win the match. But you'll see the partnership that's working against each other and are a bit fractious and are not happy with the way each other are playing, they're the ones that typically will lose the match in the end. If you want this book, um, Double Up, you can go to any one of my sites, either racketdrills.com or helpmysquashgame.com and just click the ebook download and you can, uh, you can buy it that way or you can buy a physical product and I'd be happy to send it to you.
Now, I was talking to um, the performance director who's just been employed by Squash Canada and is now working up at the NSA. I've known him for years. His name is Jamie Hickox, a very good guy. And he was just telling me a little bit about uh, what's going on in the NSA. Here we are at the National Squash Academy. Uh, I'm here with Jamie Hickox, who is the National Performance Director for Squash Canada. Jamie, great to have you back in Canada. Thanks so tell us where you've been. Well, I've had uh, four years in Malaysia, 93 to 98, preparing for the Commonwealth Games. I had six years in Philadelphia at the Marion Cricket Club, followed by another five years in Malaysia as a coach for the Malaysians, obviously doing very well with Nicole David and others, and just decided to come back to Canada, somewhere to settle down, and got lucky with the performance program. So what are you going to be doing here? Well, initially the, the first mandate I'd like to uh, commit to is really getting to know the players better. They've sort of been on their own a lot. They've not had direction, they've not had sustained coaching. So as the Centre of Excellence here at the NSA, we have 14 to 15 national athletes committed to this place and we're training them every day. Wow, so we're going to be seeing Canada being a real force in 2015 when it's in the, the Pan Am Games, it's going to be in Toronto. 2015 is a, a short time away. We're going to do our best for that. We do have some talented players. We've got some uh, established players. And on the men's side, we have four or five guys who really have a chance to make a strong team. And on the guy and girls' side, we have three, four, or five as well. We can comprise a good team. The trick is in the training from now till then and the progress they make. And that's going to be you, right? It'll be me and the team of coaches that are involved with the program. We've got a great uh, network of coaches in Canada. Very impressed with that, actually. Uh, draw upon all of their efforts. Most of these kids have been coached by someone. It's important to bring that to the table. It's not just going to be me. It's going to be everyone else involved too. But yes, I'll be there leading as well as I can and hoping for a 215 Pan American challenge for the crowd. Wow. Well, we're going to be looking forward to that. Jamie Hickox, great to have you back in Canada. And we look forward to watching the progress of both the Canadian teams. So that's exciting. And this summer at the NSA, um, there's going to be the first all-glass doubles court installed. Now that's going to be really cool with a gallery all the way around. Um, and I think that's going to take doubles to a whole new level again. So I would encourage you to uh, get out and play a game. Uh, you'll find lots of uh, courts around the city. Uh, down at Mayfair Lakeshore, we've got one at the Parkway, we've got two, so they're, they're being um, built more and more now. I'm not sure you've heard, but World Squash Day is on October the 20th this year. There's been an article that has just come out um, which says karate is the most popular sport in the world. And if we want squash in the Olympics, we have to get our sport known. We have to create a presence out there. And right now, I can tell you, our presence isn't high enough. This is in Canada, this is in England, this is right the way across the world. If, if you love squash, you need to be playing on October the 20th. And you need to go to all of your clubs right the way across the world and create some sort of day so that we have this day on record as being the largest participation day um, for any sport. And now it's time for Ask Barb. Hi Barb, I'm Brenda, fairly new to doubles. I have a doubles question for you. How do I, after I've hit the tin on what was going to be a great shot, do with my partner who glares at me and is really upset at my shot. How do I deal with her or him? Well, Brenda, I know that glare. It's happened to me so often. The first thing I think you've got to accept is accept it. Um, and then if I were you, I would start to talk to your opponent, uh, talk to your partner. 
Uh, I know they feel like an opponent when they glare at you, but you really need to, to talk to your partner and you need, again, to be supportive. I don't think criticizing your partner when they glare at you is going to be the, the key. Most of the time, if you can make yourself friendlier and supportive, then they might take that and start to become friendlier and more supportive of you. Um, it's a very tricky area. I think it should be discussed between you and your partner. And I really do think communication is the key. And if it bugs you, you have to tell them. You cannot leave it because that's going to eat you up all the way through the match. And instead of having two opponents, you're actually going to have four. There's going to be the two opponents, your partner, who you're not happy with, and you're even going to be playing yourself because you're not going to spend the time just looking to see where the ball is, where your opponents are and where best to hit it. Anyway, this is Barb Cooper from HelpMySquashGame.com, signing off.